You're listening to Opinions and Beer. Stone Cold Steve Austin knows that the Opinions and Beer podcast exists in this world. And opinions, opinions and beer. Two guys and another guy will never happen again. Party fouled all of the damn place. Oh man, yeah, this beer's got such a head on it. Bro. Oh yeah, I did. Yeah, how's that? Hi. Hi. Cheers to you. Cheers to yeah. you, Matey. Cheers. I'm I'm making me some uh ginger beer and rum. Oh heck yeah, that's a nice nice combo you got there. Very this classic. Very subtle. Very I know we're judging it later, but it's very, very mild. This is? Right. Well, pour all the damn fucking thing. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but we 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 poured these beers and it was it obviously over carbonated. <laughs> <laughs> the head on these beers, uh, <laughs> as soon as we poured them, overtook the glass and is now all over me and pouring on me. <laughs> you know what? It may be better if I just throw there it on the be, ground. There should be no complaining about head. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that, and I think I'll do without the hat now. I mean, it's a solid. I mean, I'll give it props. Solid head. Solid head. But it good was, head game. It was annoying to wipe up. <laughs> <laughs> Had to get a towel and everything. Had to get a towel. That's what they make wipes for. <laughs> oh man, how are you today? So today, everybody, this is opinions and beer. Today's guest is Captain. William Mayhem, and don't make me misspell your mispronounce your last name. What's your last yeah. name? My real last name is McCray. M C R E A. Ah, I said McCray. Nobody that's listens to me. Hey, he's a... like, what's the, what's his last name? I said McCray, and he's like, nah, that can't be how you pronounce. Yeah, I guess you know, fuck me. Well, it's too <laughs> badass. It was too awesome. Yeah, McCray. <laughs> that is an awesome. Uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Is the background good enough for you? Oh, oh heck, absolutely. Yes. It looks awesome. Looks, looks very awesome. awesome. I mean, we literally have a melting clock. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I've been saying for ages. We're gonna do something about that one day. Someday. Yeah, we gotta work up the funds. The budget. <laughs> where, so where are you in? Te- where in Texas are you guys? We are in Southeast Texas. Uh, we are uh, basically in the Houston Beaumont area. Yeah. Okay. All right. Beaumont area. Very. I next spent to some the, time uh, as a scoundrels boy. In, the Scoundrels Inn podcast. The, 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 a pirate pod. Which reminds me of a. Uh, you know, uh, one of the reasons why I was so thrilled to have you on the show is, uh, man, like, I- I've been doing extensive research on pirates for ages, just out of, like, almost just uh, pure amusement, just because for my own, just because I wanted to. And I never, ever, ever get to talk about it. Like, I did all this research, and no one fucking cares. Oh, my God. And I'm like, hey, like, man, you want, you want to talk? Dude, do you know I know everything about pirates? And everyone's just like, I don't want to hear it. We're competing. There's, <laughs> there's literally a huge pirate podcast down the street you want to compete with. Damn well, it. I bet you I know more than they do. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> okay. and it's so good to have someone to finally talk to about it. and not. There's always, there's always those that think they know, claim they know brag they know about pirate history um and and i'll start this whole thing off by telling you i may not know at all but i've been working in a pirate museum for almost 11 years now and i've been doing this pirate thing for 16. he's so on that what? Okay. you you actually um correct me if i'm wrong you um you started one of the big uh pirate was it parade or uh festivals over in saint, saint augustine right I was on the committee that helped. There were about eight of us, I believe, that started the St. Augustine Pirate Festival back in 2008. Um, It was called the St. Augustine Pirate Gathering, and I was part of that. Um, But as things happened with groups of people, um, I stepped away and made my own course in a different direction. Um, It was just easier that way. I... I, I, I do this for a living. This is, this is, it's not a hobby for me. I do this for a full-time living. And so when you do this for a full-time living, there are certain, certain behaviors that you have to kind of step aside from. Um, I, I, I do not deny anybody the opportunity to dress as a pirate, act like a pirate, drink like a pirate, but yeah. there is a time and place for everything. And especially when I'm, I, I, I do, 
800 school tours a year and 400 public tours a year for tourists in, in St. Augustine. Yeah. You really do have to kind of mind your P's and Q's, so to speak. Um, and that brings up a good point right there. Do you know what, do you know where minding your P's and Q's came from? No, I don't actually, not at all. It's actually a colonial term when your beers were, since you're, this is a beer thing, yeah. your beers were pup poured in pints and quarts, P's and Q's. Ah. If you leaned on the bar and thought that the bartender had shorted you a bit, you might slide your mug back across the bar and say, hey, you best be minding me P's and Q's here. That's uh, crazy. crazy. Yeah, that, no, the, the, that, yeah, that makes so, so much sense. And it makes That's mine and awesome. your P's and Q's so much cooler. <laughs> yeah. It does, because it all resolves around beer or drink. Oh, yeah. Yes. 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 We do a lot of, uh, we do a lot. We actually, uh, we're brewing our own craft beer finally. We're starting to brew our own craft beer, but like the whole gimmick is that we, uh, we have a new craft beer all the time. We were going to get, uh, we were going to get a pirate pirate beer for you, but in, uh, we instead but we failed. Well, <laughs> uh, there was one out there that I could have grabbed, but instead we grabbed this Tangerine Session L Swell Riders, this uh, lady, <laughs> lady on the Production ocean, <laughs> lady on the ocean. Uh, well, you know, there is a pirate beer now, too. Yes. Yeah, it's just, you know, if it's well, not available down here. No, like, no, I mean, there's a... It and it's, it's, oh, it's not yeah. easily available here. I think the only way I... The only way I've been able to drink it so far is a couple of the couple of the places in St. Augustine have it on tap. It's only you can only buy it in keg. You can't find it in bottles. At least I haven't been able to yet. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's only yeah. keg right now. And I, I've sent messages to them. They're down in the island somewhere. And I sent messages to them asking if there was a possibility that we could work some deals out together yeah. because I, you know, I usually can get a rum sponsorship for some of my events but having a beer sponsorship that's a pirate beer would be wonderful oh, yeah. so in keeping with it i at least have gosling's ginger beer Woo! oh yeah so. <laughs> hey that's awesome because like you know a lot uh, we, we have a lot of guests on the show and, and not all of them drink beer with us so it's very <laughs> awesome that you're drinking beer with us you know? yeah well a lot of them are pretentious actors and so they can't, they can't, a, they can't be seen getting drunk. They can't be seen. Wait, pretentious and actors, isn't that an oxymoron? <laughs> yes, so you're right. Yeah. You're right. I shouldn't say that. That's probably offensive. I, yeah. I We'll never get a guest again. I hope you're happy. No, no, no. <laughs> they know. They know I'm joking. They know. They know this what's going on. If, if, if they're entertainers and they don't have a sense of humor, they don't need to be entertainers. Exactly. Oh, yeah. In fact, I've got a uh, I've got a good pirate joke I want to uh, throw out there. Oh my god! All right. What's <laughs> the uh, what's the uh, most what's the favorite th what's the most favorite thing to pirates about a podcast? Well, that's a new one. I have no idea. You can tell me now. The auxiliary port. Oh, oh my god, I hate you. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. I, hate, I, I can't reach through the Go. screen, but if you want to slap him, I'd I'd laugh at that. <laughs> Our auxiliary, get it? Just there's a straight rule, do like you, no do, do you get it. Shut up! Yes, I get it. <laughs> All right, so let's let's improve it now. Why do why do mermaids wear seashells? Oh, because of uh, the PG rating? No, because B shells are too small. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> I like it. You're. <laughs> You're a pretty funny guy. Uh, you uh, you you open up for a lot of uh, comedians I've seen. Um, what what how'd you get into doing this comed the comedian side of things? Oh, I um, I'd always been funny, or so I thought. <laughs> or so I thought. Um, <laughs> class clown. It's important to think that yourself is funny. Yeah. Yeah, the whole nine yards, and and I started doing magic professionally or in front of audiences when I was about 15 or 16 years old, it was, um, magic was, magic was a good way to, to get around, uh, school bullies or to, and, and because I was a military brat, we traveled around a lot. So I went to several different schools besides here in Florida, Arizona, Texas, I went to grade school in Abilene, Texas. Oh, and, yeah. Yeah. Um, so magic was kind of a, a an icebreaker. Um, when I got into high school, magic was a great way to meet women. True story. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I joined the military and I traveled with the military for 15 years. 
but a lot of my assignments were overseas. Magic and music are universal languages. Oh yeah. You, you can talk to anybody in the world by sitting with a drink in front of you, sharing drinks with people. And magic was my bridge for communication, whereas the same would be for people I know that are musicians. So I lived in many countries in the world and magic was a good thing. I ended up in Las Vegas. Um, the United States military saw fit to assign me to Area 51 for a little while. Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> so don't turn the lights off or I'll still glow. Um, <laughs> and while I was there, none of my friends really truly knew I was in the military because I was in a plainclothes job for most of my time. And so none of my friends knew I was even, they knew I was stationed out at Area 51, but they had no idea I was in the military. So, and because I was, I did my work for the military at Area 51 in the morning from about 4.30 in the morning till noon, my afternoons and evenings are free. And because I was a magician, I started doing comedy clubs in the evening. I get done with a comedy night and go take a two hour nap and then get on the airplane and fly to Area 51 and do my other job. Nobody knew. It was like being a secret agent. <laughs> uh, so, but I want to say, I told you, you can survive off of just two hours of sleep a night. <laughs> sleep is a waste of time. You're wasting your life sleeping. I slept for just 60 minutes the other night, and it was on purpose. <laughs> yeah, everyone. You know. Hey, it depends on how good a sleep it is. But but besides getting two or three hours of sleep a night while I lived in Las Vegas for five or six years, um, the airplane flight from Las Vegas airport to out into the middle of the desert where Area 51 was, but by the time you sat your butt in the seat on the airplane and then got up and left the airplane, it was 60 minutes. Oh, so yeah. So I got a nap. I got a nap there. going to work. I got a nap coming to work. So in all actuality, I got three naps every 24 hours. And that's okay. how, and, and I, but I was younger then. I, I, I don't think I could do that now. Oh, <laughs> I, I know what you mean. See, like ages ago, like I used to just like, I, like last yeah, year, <laughs> last year, no, like 10 years ago. No, I was in my, I'm, I'm 34 now. Like, yeah, literally like 10 years ago, I was like 24 and we were drinking like seven nights a week and I, I was getting drunk until like six or seven in the morning and then waking up at like nine or 10 in the morning and people were like, how you do it? And I'm like, you know, like I got to go to work later. Like I ain't trying to waste my life sleeping. And I tried that, you know, like and then he got fired for being hung over and drunk. Over. No, no. <laughs> then he got but no, like, so I, I tried that recently, you know, I'm back on nights and stuff and I, I don't want to waste time sleeping. I still want to hang out with my friends. And it's just like, man, I just can't pull it off. Like I used to. <laughs> uh, well, Hey, I just turned 63. I'm 63. <laughs> In fact, my birthday was Friday. Oh, oh happy, happy birthday. birthday. Oh. Thank you. And because of all the work okay, I do, um, I have access to some of the nice hotels here in St. Augustine and the Embassy Hilton out on the beach. I had a two night stay at no cost to myself. Okay. And so my wife and I stayed there on Thursday night and Friday night. And Friday was my birthday. And so we started off Friday first getting up and seeing the sun come up out of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh, and that there was nice. a, there was a Mickey Mouse shaped cloud out there. So I took, we took the picture and told everybody that Disney came to celebrate my birthday. And then we, we sat at the pool and or at the beach because they have beach property too. Oh. From 1030 in the morning until about 630 that evening on Friday evening, the, the hotel, because everybody knows me at the hotel, they gave me a cabana. I, I don't know how many rums I drank. We <laughs> ate food. I had a few few close friends come over and sit in the cabana with me. And we just sat there all day talking and, and visiting. And I didn't stop drinking. And then when my wife was done for the night at about 7 o'clock, I went up, changed my clothes, and went down. They have a rum bar. It's called the rum bar in the hotel. And I sat in the rum bar until 10 o'clock that night with some other friends that came to drink with me. So I literally drank rum for 12 hours straight on my birthday. Jesus. <laughs> now I will oh, tell man. you, at my age, it took me all Saturday and Sunday to get over it. <laughs> man. 
<laughs> that meme where like you know you it shows that yeah. dude in a coma and it's like when you do drink and you're older you know <laughs> you you saying but all I, that you saying all that i need to tell my kids to age the hell up yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't like i was slamming them back and i was staggering no, no, was coasting yeah, yeah. Coasting. it was it was a slow 12 hours worth of drinking that that when i went to bed that night i fell asleep but yeah, it, yeah, yeah. yeah i was no drunk but, but i was not i was not ugly drunk so, or mis, mischievous or anything else it was it was a nice relaxing and i probably during the day drank seven maybe eight mixed rums big ones oh, and then yeah. at the at the bar that night and the bartender was wonderful because they have they have they have a list of about 40 rums and one of my friends was there and we just go well let's try this one and we try this one we try that one we tried nine different rums at the bar in three hours nine different rums and my bill should have been way more than that bartender charged me so she got a very nice tip oh damn that's very cool yeah see that's what matters man like you know it's just like uh i mean i'm in the uh you know the service industry so like i tell people service that industry. all the, yeah whatever we serve people podcasts oh yeah well we don't get paid for it yet so i'm in the service industry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and i did i tell people that like dude like repeat service matters just like you know being like friendly and pleasant you know yeah but we're getting too much into my shit day job oh my god uh what do you what do you both do for day jobs okay my day job i work it's for better than mine whatever i work for <laughs> i work for coca-cola and, uh, and he uh he's a manager at little, uh, little caesars yeah uh so that's our day jobs so and then I, we and then we come here and then we uh we uh con uh celebrities to come on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> we would like we swear we're professional and then they get on and, and they get and then, us and then we, yeah. we we ask them what their favorite pokemon is <laughs> <laughs> and all kinds of goofy ass shit no no uh, some people when we, when we first started out we were very you know we we were game for it you know we were we were gung-ho we had a uh, our biggest uh guest at the time that gave us a chance was michael jai white and now he's literally michael jai white is our uh he's kind of like our um what, what do you call it mascot mascot he's kind he of like our no he's kind of like our <laughs> mascot like he, he 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 recorded our intro for us so he introduces the show every time it plays and so uh it's just really cool uh but then we had a really bad interview with jason ellis and everything went downhill <laughs> so and so, we haven't recovered since and so uh <laughs> and he shit on he shat on us on a satellite radio on faction talk and uh and funny enough the only reason we got him on is because that was kind of our audience we were right. we were kind of pandering to that audience and then when our audience then heard that. bad stuff about us by jason That's ellis it it's like oh no but uh we slowly been growing back you know we obviously we had joe mckell on the show and then uh napoleon dynamite um john header yeah. uh uh michael gross was on the show so uh, and then most recently, we helped uh, promote the uh, the new Mortal Kombat movie. Had a bunch of had a couple of the Mortal Kombat uh, cast on the show, so it's been really cool. It's been really cool trying to grow uh, this thing. Uh, How but, long have you been doing it? Well, we have been doing it for a two a year, two uh, years, two years. Is it two and, years now? And some change. I think I thought we just hit a year. Oh no, we just had two years. Yeah, we had oh. our second our My bad. second year anniversary. Well, because we started in October 2018. Yeah. So. Yeah, there we so go. Michael Michael White, he's the uh, black martial artist, right? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes. Best known for uh, he, you know, he was Spawn in the '90s. Right. You know, he did Blood and Bone and so on. I love his movies. I. Oh yeah. I, oh yeah. I, I'd be I'd be really thrilled to actually have a chat with him. He's pretty cool. I like. Oh yeah, him. he was really awesome, and uh, his movies are cool. We had a we had a really awesome chat with him, and uh, it was it was so good that these uh fake news articles started stealing our content <laughs> they were stealing <laughs> they were literally posting their article like blah 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 this news i'm like you stole that from us we <laughs> we covered that <laughs> we we did it first we <laughs> were a podcast you know well, so it was just kind of so funny. does he drink beer no he doesn't that's the whole joke too the whole so we, we actually have a um he's probably very physically fit 
He, well, oh he, yeah, absolutely. He, he drinks. Uh, I think he does drink like rum and stuff and whiskey. He's well, not a beer guy. Rum, I like him. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. He drink, he drinks more hard liquor. He's not really he he he's a little bit older, and so like, uh, for some older people, uh, craft the craft beer thing doesn't it hasn't really hit them. That when they when people think beer, they kind of think uh, Bud Light. You know Miller yep. and stuff, yep. and so they the the Anheuser Busch, the uh, <laughs> you know barrel aged stout. Isn't even and... American owned anymore. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so I, like, I, I <laughs> no, so we we We've had this done. sort of thing because like the whole how I guess like this may not have started because of this reason, but uh, like you know how trendy it is to have like everything's a shared universe, everything's connected. Uh, so is our podcast now, and we have this deep, underlined, subtle plot to our podcast. Yes, that we're doing through. We're trying to get comic books published. So, so, <laughs> so, so, literally, the idea of the podcast <clears throat> is that we that Michael Jai White is trying to start a brewery. This is like a fantasy idea. He's trying to start a brewery, but he doesn't know how to brew beer. So it's our goal to f- go out. And find beers to recreate for his brewery to keep it open for us to hang out. <laughs> Chad. We have at least four, maybe five breweries in this town. Yes, is you know, uh, you know, uh, craft. You just say Saint Augustine. That sounds no, like no, yeah, beer uh, craft beer is really huge. We've only had a, a select few beers from Florida, uh, only because I went to obviously when. It, yeah, I went to Disney World, and on the way back, uh, driving back home, I'm like, we got to stop at a damn beer store so I could bring some beer back from Florida, because because obviously they have special stuff. Like, uh, you know, in Los, like, you can't really, unless you're uh, someone who sells beer, like, you can't have, for, like, personal reasons, beer shipped to you in Texas. Yeah, Texas You can only have it weird. shipped to you in massive quantities. There's a, there, there's a rum up in Canada that's the same way. I want I, I want so badly to try this rum up in Nova Scotia, but they're not allowed to ship it out. Dang. Oh yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll make I'll make an offer to you. Okay. Okay. For Sometime listening. in the future, come to St. Augustine. We'll do a run to, of. The, of several of the breweries and you can record it and add it to your Heck repertoire. Yes. You know, I no, 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 no. I've been thinking about that. Cause remember, so, so we actually do have like, uh, I, I, I went and applied. I, I, I can like put stuff on Amazon prime. Anyone can do it, but like, just get, you know, I, I understand the approval process for Amazon prime. So, uh, before the pandemic, before the pandemic, before the pandemic, yeah, before COVID happened, we had this whole plan set out to where we were going to do this traveling uh, show as like a like kind of like a spinoff of the podcast. We're still doing the podcast, but have this spinoff to where we would go and travel to like breweries and just like show local local talent and like it'd be like this extra stuff. And we're going to put it on Amazon Prime, and it was going to be this awesome stuff. So uh, that idea definitely sparks that interest in me to uh, to bring that back up and we could, uh, could go come down here down. i'm friends with at least two of the breweries probably have contacts with all of them hell yeah you could come here you could make it a pirate theme yes absolutely because you're in the oldest city in the united states and we, we saint augustine has pirate history some people want to deny that but we have pirate history here oh and I, yeah here, so i want to talk you, to you about that You'd have to spend time, though. You'd have to spend several days here. Yeah. But uh, I, I think we could probably work out something that would be very beneficial both for you and for me. So yeah. do, you, do you record everything we're doing right now? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, we're recording. Yeah, yeah. And then what you do is you then you edit it to what you need? Yeah, well, uh, actually, we we kind of we, we kind of post everything. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, we're a little raw. No, yeah. uh, well, I just found that, like, uh, a lot of people, they like to see, like, there's – Act, you know, act, real conversations. The fluidness of it, you know, like there's nothing that you know, uh, so we're, could happen right now bet- uh, between. Now, our when it comes to like a show, because I've edited, I, I've edited movies and shows before, so I understand editing shows and stuff. But when it comes to the podcast in general, uh, it's compl- it's pretty much unedited. I I put in an intro and outro, uh, and if if Keenan says something offensive, I have to edit that out. Yeah, <laughs> which happens. <laughs> and I'll. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll mind me P's and Q's on that one. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you, you have my virtual agreement that whatever we talk about here, you can use. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah. See, I thought about that. I I know you're, you're like you know you got uh 
the museum thing going on and, and you, the touring and you do a lot of family friendly things and i was like i hope we I hope he knows we're vulgar as fuck oh yeah. my god <laughs> you're this 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 is really probably going to be seen by more adults and children anyway yeah Oh yeah, no. dude! I would I'm hope so. I'm not worried. Beer, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not worried about it. If you want, I'll give you something that you can use, and then you can cut and paste this and use it. Okay. Anytime we, anytime that something happens that might be a little bit out of line, pirate. <laughs> <laughs> now you can cut and paste that segment and put it in there every time <laughs> yes. that you want. It's gonna be used a lot for me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I, I'm very <laughs> lucky. That's funny. I'm very lucky because of my time doing stage in Vegas and comedy clubs in California and Arizona and everywhere else. Uh, improv's not a problem for me. Yeah. Conversation's not a problem for me. And it's what makes some of my tours a lot of fun. Yeah. Is because yeah, I just fun. I just pop out and as long as I'm getting the facts and you know, I'm not telling people lies i mean i opened some of my tours with telling people they're about to hear all about pirate history that's not from the great pirate historian walt disney <laughs> yeah oh man uh, hey I talk so much about that you know yeah you know i was gonna say you know one of my favorite um <clears throat> my one of my favorite docuseries uh, that is pretty uh, pretty prevalent in my life as far as pirate history goes is definitely the um <clears throat> pirates of the caribbean series <laughs> uh, you're killing me. I think I think I think Captain I ja you. Captain Jack Sparrow is probably the uh, best pirate still. to ever live. <laughs> so here's so here's here's my professional opinion about Pirates of the Caribbean. First movie was awesome because it just kicked off everything. Oh, dude, it, absolutely! It, it laid the groundwork, and the second movie was just as good. I thought some people don't think so, but the third and the fourth movie. They got a little out of hand with vampire mermaids and, and <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff. And, and I'll just, just oh, like, for, for a while, like, just Blackbeard in, in that movie. It's just, I get, I get that, like, you know, <laughs> this is well after Blackbeard's actual history, well after he's been killed in battle with, you know, you know Robert Maynard and all that. And, uh, right. And it's supposed to be like he came back from the dead or he never died. So it's years right. after the death of Blackbeard that they introduced Blackbeard. But just my like, opinion on the on the Disney movies, and you know they're making a sixth one. Oh yeah, uh, with possibly well, without it, even uh, Johnny well, Depp, Jack Sparrow, an all, an all female Pirates of the Caribbean. That's what they're talking about. It doesn't matter if it's a bad movie or a good movie. A good, the largest portion of the, of the population will enjoy the movie and as long as they keep doing movies i keep having a job <laughs> yeah really yeah. literally really that's they it. are spiking i swear to god it start. that's how it started all right i was younger i really enjoyed yeah especially like i i knew oh like vaguely about pirate history just like basic i guess the iconic things that the general public knows and uh like you pick up on the tropes that they're playing on and again like the, the first part of the caribbean's movie was based on the ride and the ride is based on tropes from general pirate history from literally uh history of pirates uh, the general history of pirates book and treasure island and treasure you know just island. All the sources of the tropes of pirates um, captain blood what was captain that captain blood captain blood yeah that's that's something all those things is what what Di walt disney himself it was the ride, the pirate, the pirate of the Caribbean ride in Disneyland was the last thing that Walt Disney himself actually worked on before his death. That's true yeah. history. And he loved pirates, but he loved pirates from that fantasy side. That's yeah, from like Captain the 1930 like films and and the black and right. white stuff with people like falling down the sail with a knife and all that, you know. I mean, Which I'm sure in, actually in, probably in the, happened at least once. In the Pirate of the Caribbean movies, um, Ian McShane, who played Blackbeard, yeah, he's a great actor. I love. Oh yeah, him. I, I love he's seeing a him. Wonderful anything. actor, but he's terribly miscast because he he, he what what is what was he? I, I think McShane is like maybe five foot eleven. Yeah, and Blackbeard was a towering man. He was six foot six. 
And depending on who you want to talk to, he weighed anywhere from 275 to 300 pounds. Oh, yeah. That was a monster. He looked like the devil coming at you. Well, you know? of course, because he put cannon fuses in his beard. A lot of people say he, he put lit ropes in his nose. He wicks, put yeah, fuses it's always in his wicks. Beard because they smolder. They don't, they don't burn. They don't flame. They smolder and cast smoke around your head. And that's what it is. But so many children will come up to me and go, did you know Blackbeard put flaming ropes in his hair? <laughs> yeah, uh, I yeah. try not. I try not to tell the children, "No, you're like, an idiot. You're wrong." I try no, to little kids are fucking wrong. Learn your I try. I try to tell the children it, it, it wasn't flaming ropes. It was, and I show them. We have the ability to show them what smoldering uh, cannon wicks are, and so they learn. There's nothing worse than having children have their their thoughts crushed so i never try to crush what they, oh, what they say i yeah, i try course. to i'll give you i'll give you a perfect example uh, and, and if if you want me to shut up just tell me to shut up but, <laughs> no well, never <laughs> i'm walking down st george street in my full pirate attire and you've seen you've seen the pictures of me in my pirate attire and it, there oh, were yeah. a couple of soldiers from the fort and it was a weekend and they had come by the museum and we were going to lunch so we're walking down st george street so you got a picture walking down the oldest street in the, in the entire nation and there's a soldier and a pirate and a soldier. So I'm flanked by two soldiers and we're walking down the street and there's a 10 year old boy that looks and points and goes, daddy, look, there's pirates. One of the soldiers was very, very rude to the child oh, that's heartbreaking. And, and, and really hurt his feelings when he, because he, he didn't have the tact to tell the kid you're an idiot. He, sh he should have said, no, we're soldiers. This pirate, we're taking him to the gallows because he's a pirate. But he didn't do that. And when we finally got to our lunch, I told this soldier, you really may have just ruined the love of history for a 10 year old boy. Oh, see, yeah, like you, I said, that's hard. that breaks my heart. You can't do that. You have to be able to figure out how to draw them in without then making to people them. feel stupid absolutely and, and so and kids more than most but i mean that's almost true to almost anybody you don't want no one to make anyone feel stupid uh, it, making them feel stupid is gonna make them want to like learn like you said it's gonna shun them away and and make them maybe like i, and, I don't and, know and yeah. the worst part because of disney and it's not just the pirate movies, but go and watch Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all bad. everybody. Everybody <laughs> wore tricorn hats like you're wearing a tricorn hat. All the bad guys, all the pirates wore tricorn hats. Well, it's not really true. Everybody wore tricorn hats, but you put a tricorn hat and a sword on my belt and you're the villain of the movie and I'm a pirate. And that's what oh, they yeah. think. So I yeah, think you're mean, like. Fuck you, little kid. I have letter of mark. I'm a privateer. <laughs> yeah. I usually just tell everybody I'm a gentleman of fortune. Now, uh, yeah, absolutely, now, that works. Yeah. Now we haven't we haven't watched it yet. Uh, he admitted I I haven't watched it yet. I don't know why I, I I've been meaning to. But have you caught the uh, the new Netflix pirate uh, documentary? Was it a lost Lost Pirate Kingdom? Yes, I have. What are your thoughts on that uh, show? And should should we watch it to get good pirate knowledge? Well, but wait before you do. Like, if you have watched it, is it a, a like a, a reenacted shock or drama a documentary slash drama? Yes. Or is it a straight drama? It's a re. It's a. There are reenactors or are costume characters playing parts, but there's. So, so let let me put it to you this way, and I'm going to try to be really polite, just in case. This gets way out there. <laughs> it's inaccurate as fuck. We tried. <laughs> we tried getting that be a pirate, uh, be a pirate guy on the show, so he might hear it. That's it. <laughs> All right. So when they open the show by telling everybody the golden age of piracy is seventeen eighteen, I hate him already. I, I have to. I have to take offense to that because that's not true. The Absolutely. golden age of piracy starts in the sixteen hundreds. 
Yeah, yeah, like it's literally debated on where it starts, but the debate is in the 1600s. It's it is deep into the golden age, but you said 1718. 1718. That's they're that's saying the, year, the golden that's age the year. piracy starts with the beginning of Nassau, is what they're saying. That, that that's that is what they're saying, and they're saying that that it starts in the that's the same year that Blackbeard dies. They also in the first or the second. I, I only think I watched two episodes of it and then i said i'm not watching i, it I can't watch this anymore yeah i'm not um, watching it they also talk about um hornsby okay, commodore yeah. Horn, hornsby who was blackbeard's superior but Hornigold? blackbeard idolized him but they talk about how in 1718 hornsby and Anne bonnie had a sexual relationship and no, that's so dumb and Bonnie doesn't come into the picture until the 1720s. Yeah, she's only oh 13 or 14 years old at, Who wrote in this? 1718. Who wrote so, this fucking book? Yeah, I see, but the, the, I did have my uh, my years mixed up, and I, I swear this is because of, uh, like maybe because of fiction. You know, it's like I'll research this shit, and I really did like Black Sales. I think Black Sales did a good job. Black Sales did well, and here, here, I'll give you my opinion of Black Sales. I like Black Sales. The first. The first year, the first season, was a little. Oh, it was the most important, yeah. Well, it was a little over the top too. Oh um, yeah. The, the 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 use of the of the f word was a little bit too much that first year. They toned it down in the second and the third year. But here's what I liked about about Black Sails. They mingled real pirates and fictional pirates into a story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The whole Treasure and Island was, prequel thing. It is because it's a prequel to Treasure Island. I mean, you, you figured so it out. Uh, I figured it out when they're taking John Silver's leg because he was crushed under the the ship when they were um, what's the word careening. they use with, careening the ship, and he the ship fell on him, crushed his leg, and they take his leg off. It was at that point that I realized that's Long John Silver. That's Captain Flint. This is a blend of real pirates into the Treasure Island story. And yeah, that's what that it Meredith, is. I thought they were wrong, but like I was getting my date mixed up. I thought uh, the whole thing with uh, Anne Bonnie, Jack Rackham, and Charles Vane, and even Mary Reed, I thought that all happened before around 1718. Like it, it's a. Uh, it's it all a revelation to find out I was wrong about the dates, and it was 1720. 1720, those pirates, Vane, Rackham, Bonnie, uh, Reed, yeah. um, Calico Jack. Oh, yeah. Uh, Which, they, they, those pirates are, are your 1720 to 1724. That's the closing of the Golden Age of Piracy. Stead yeah, well, Bonnet. See, I was thought uh, I thought they were there in Nassau by 1720. Nassau, Woods Rogers has already taken Nassau back, right? He, ha I thought he they has. Were there 17, at, 1720, 1721. Yes. I thought. So, uh, but Mary you, Reed but and Jack Bonnie, Rackham and all them were part of Nassau, part of the Pirate Republic. They were, but they they went to trial in 1723. Oh man, dude! I th oh yeah, that's right. Like they went to trial after. Like I, I'm I'm associating. The end of Nassau is so close with Blackbeard's death. Like it was literally year Blackbeard died in seventeen eighteen or is it it's seventeen eighteen? That's right? right. That's right. And then uh it was it wasn't like it was that year that uh Woods Rogers showed up, ended it all. It no, was, Woods Rogers showed up seventeen nineteen, I think, seventeen twenty. Yeah. But he didn't it, it's not like he flipped the light switch and the and the golden age of piracy ended. He had to round them all up. He had to make deals and he he was just as bad a pirate as the rest of them. Oh, yeah. He, he, See, I forget that because, like, I, I did my research. I did my my homework and all that. But then I played Assassin's Creed Black Flag. And they <laughs> they, uh, they scrunched that shit together. Like, you, you go through the missions too fast, and you'll feel like it all happened in the same year. You know? Yeah. All right. So I'll give you two, two <clears throat> points for you to think about. When they did Assassin's Creed Black Flag, they came to the, the people creating it came to St. Augustine and they, they had one of those 360 degree cameras on their on their car. 
Who yeah. They took yeah. live. They took live videos of, of old spots of St. Augustine. And if you step away from your character in, I've never played it, so I don't know. But if oh, you step away will. from your character, you may see buildings, cartoonized buildings in St. Augustine in Black Flag. Oh, nice. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah, I know. I, I think I know what you're talking about. And uh, so here's here's a way here's a way to argue with people about, and I do this all the time, because I have so many people that, especially some of them that write books on pirates, whether it's fictional or historical. Yeah. And they always say, you know, the golden age of piracy is the 1700s, and I have to argue with them and tell them it starts in the 1680s. Oh yeah. Yeah. And here's how you here's how you get them to admit the wrong ask most of them to pick out their five favorite pirates of the golden age of piracy one of those five will always be at least as far as it's gone for me one of those five will always be captain morgan absolutely which is that's me and captain Morgan and captain morgan was in the 1680s lost his life died from alcohol poisoning in, in, in the, the 1690s, 1680s right? after he was after he was the governor of port royal jamaica he created rum believe it or not but if you're a historian and you tell me that the golden age of piracy starts in the 1700s and then i ask you to name one of your five of your favorite pirates and one of them is from the 1680s you've just told on yourself yeah, you just, you know, you just He's, made yourself uncredible. You're not a reliable source. Now, my last name is Morgan, so I'm pretty sure I'm related to him. So Yeah, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yeah, and, Mor uh, Morgan, Morgan is well governor of Port Royal, Jamaica, because he made a deal with the king and he was supposed to go down there and kind of clean things up. And he just made it a pirate haven. The other the other fun part about telling the history of the of the new world whether it's spanish history or british history or pirate history anything from the from the 15 16 and 1700s is that all those countries in europe all those royal families sent all their emissaries their governors their their watchdogs and everybody else and they were just as dirty as the pirates were because yeah. there was no checks and balances here yeah None. there's, there, there's little, i've seen a meme once there was like uh you compare what the government was doing to what the pirates are doing, and it's just they didn't like competition as all. Yeah. That's why they shut the pirates down. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the the pirates were really causing a financial crisis to Spain, France, and England. Oh yeah, they were shutting down commerce by sea. You know, they, they, they were, were literally they were, they were controlling it all. Yeah, and not only were they controlling it all, they were stealing it all. Yeah, they yeah. Which brings another good point. Here's a really fun point. I, I like this one. In my tours, I tell people there are people that will write stories about pirates or books about pirates. And everybody always says pirates killed everybody they came in contact with. One, oh, man, no. one common sense idea would tell you that's not true. If they killed everybody they came in contact with. There'd be nobody to tell the stories of pirates. <laughs> yeah, and, and they say they, oh, they even say that in uh in uh, the parts of the Caribbean. It's like, oh, I heard that they need leave no one alive. Well, if they leave no one alive, where'd you hear the stories from? <laughs> yeah. you know? It's 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 one of the things because I do this for a living. So I'll tell you this: if you if you put it out there, it's it's not going to bother because I'm not going to use any names. But I'll tell you this: because I do this for a living, and because I'm probably one of the most photographed pirates, at least in St. Augustine, if not most of Florida, because of everything that I do. Yeah, I have jealous pirates. I have pirates that they can't get past that because they want to put on a pirate suit and they want to be be everything else. And that's fine. I understand that. And so I've had people who have joined the pirate community and I've met them at socials and I'll put my hand out and say, hi, I'm Captain Mayhem. And they'll roll their eyes and go, oh, we've heard about you. And I say, well, that's good. Because in the words of Jack Sparrow, when Norrington told Sparrow, you've got to be the pirate I've ever heard of. And what <laughs> yeah. does Sparrow say? Yes, you but you have heard, heard of Oh, I do love that line, yes. Uh, that's a great line. And I, I use it a lot, both with tourists and others, yeah. um, because it, it shows it, it it actually is the pirate version in the entertainment world 
that the only bad publicity is no publicity at all. <laughs> yeah, like any and Jack Sparrow has made it a pirate saying. So there you go. Yeah. Now, uh, what is your connection to the? Do you do you have any connection to this? Uh, uh, the black Advi- the Black Raven Adventures. I was one of the first entertainers that was hired on the ship in two thousand nine. Um. In fact, I was was an entertainer. The other pirates were not necessarily entertainers. Um, they had pirate knowledge. They had pirate look. But I was hired because I was an entertainer. I did magic on the ship. Um, I was hired to give my advice on how to set up some entertainment shows. Um, and the safest, the nicest way to say this is that the owner of the ship and myself, many, many differences of opinion about what, what was good entertainment. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, and and that's the that's the the most professional way to say that. Yeah. Um. I I don't hold any, especially now, uh, and especially at sixty three, I've quit holding grudges. I don't care anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I w- when I left the ship in November of two thousand and ten, I'd been on the ship for a little over a year. And I, I just left the ship because I, I just couldn't stand the turmoil that was caused every time we had a disagreement. Yeah. I had ideas that I thought would, I make, mean, would yeah. be good. He didn't like those ideas. He would make us try things that would just be embarrassing. And so it, we just, it, we parted ways. But he had me in so much of his print and video advertisements he continued to use me for two, three, and four years down the road. Because <laughs> you're first, that damn good. That's what that means. You know? At first, it pissed me off because I wanted to call him up and say, hey, you can't do that anymore. But in the long run, it, it actually was you. more in my favor. It was more in my oh, favor. Yeah. But like, I like left said, him. What's that? Like, like you said, like there's no bad, such thing as bad publicity. He's he's oh. putting your fucking face out there for you. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it worked because I would have people that would come to me because I left him in November of, of 2010 and the museum snapped me up right away. Oh, yeah. And I started working yeah. for the museum in, in, in around Christmas time of 2010 and I've been with him ever since. So it's that's 10 and a half years. Uh, that's a nonstop pirate gig for 10 and a half years. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, people would come to me and go, oh, I just saw your image on TV on a Keat commercial or what, whatever it was. And I would just go, yeah, that's me. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, thank so, you. It, it worked out well. It, I don't harbor any, I, I no longer harbor any grudges in any way, shape or form about the whole. Um, I wish that I could have done more to make the Black Raven what I thought it should be. But they're still surviving. They're still existing. They're, they've been around now for, for the museum's been around for almost 11 years. But the Black Raven's been around for almost 12 years. Um, and what is it? That's an, uh, it's an actual pirate ship, right? Uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's an all steel ship. It's an all metal ship. It's, it's, it's not like an a, actual uh, pirate ship. It's built to look like a, a, a small Spanish galleon. And it's it's um, named after the uh, oh, Black, it, it's named morning. after uh, Blackbeard's ship, correct or no? The Queen Anne's Revenge. No, no. Uh, Blackbeard's ship was the Queen Anne's Revenge. Oh my bad. Yeah, they picked the Black Raven. I, I'm not. I, I think they picked the Black Raven because the man that owns the ship is Swedish, and ravens have a special thing in the Swedish in Swedish lore. Okay. And I believe, if I remember right, that might be why he picked Raven oh. and Black Raven just made. So, right, but I was one of the raven. I was one of the yeah. six. It was built over in in uh, a, 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 a shipbuilding yard just south of Tampa. Oh, okay. and so in two thousand and nine, myself and five other guys, we drove across the state, took possession of the ship, and then brought it all the way around through the through the Gulf of Mexico, past the Keys, and up the coast to St. Augustine. It was a ten hour trip. Wait, like, uh, yeah, but like you, uh. You sailed like you drove it, or like you, you on a on a trailer, or you sailed it in the water. Yeah, the like, so like whether it's a, a, a recreated ship that's actually still or not, that that sounds very fun. <laughs> it was it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. We we hit bad water. All of almost all of us ended up puking all over the side of the ship one of those nights. And <laughs> yeah, that's great. I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say I got seasick. 
Um, first time in my life I've ever gotten seasick. I've been on ships before, but I got seasick. Um, but it was an adventure. I think if, if I remember right, it was it was almost ten days. Ten oh, days wow. nonstop that is all a, the way that's around. That's a voyage. Yeah, yeah. It these was a days. voyage, and it was a lot of fun. And and the, the <laughs> guys, the guys that I did the, did the ship with. Let's see. One, two, three, four. None of them. None of us work for the for the Black Raven now. None of the none of the five. Yeah. None of the six original work for the Black Raven at all. They've all walked away. Now, yeah. but what's the? Uh, do you have any connection to a ship called the Bounty? What is the? What is the, the Bounty? bounty? I, I do. I have a connection to the Bounty also. The Bounty. <coughs> pardon me. The Bounty is a movie recreation of the real HMS Bounty. Yeah, the real HMS Bounty was a story of Mister Christian mutinying on a British naval ship against Captain Bly, who was very cruel, and he mutinied, sent the officers adrift in a small small boat, took over the ship, and created a pirate crew. But they didn't go pirating a lot. They they went to some islands and stayed there and lived there. Um, but it's a true story. So when they started to make the the movies about the hms bounty and there was one made with um marlon brando that's how old that one is there was another one made <laughs> yeah. with, another one made with mel age. gibson wow. yeah, i think there were three there was one made with mel gibson i don't remember the third one all historical docu historical movies about the story of the hms bounty it came here to saint augustine um the year before it sank and I became friends with the captain and his daughter and some of the crew. I actually, during one of the publicity things they did, I actually played Captain Bly on the ship for oh, yeah. a publicity stunt. <laughs> and then it took off and went to Savannah for a tall ship convention up there. And it was at, it just happened to be I had to go up there to the tall ship convention because I'd been hired to do pirate magic for this convention. So I got to hang out with them up there in Savannah also. Um, and then it was later on in the next year that they were going up the coast and got caught in a hurricane and they sank and the Jeez. captain and his daughter went down with the ship. Oh, oh wow. wow. So it, that ship is now gone. Jesus. It's, it's, it's at the bottom of the ocean off the, off the coast of the Carolinas and Virginia. And it's in pretty deep water. It may never ever be brought back up. That's, that's pretty wow. upsetting. That's pretty, so, that, that's pretty cool. So crazy. I have, I have some, have some ties with that. I've been on a couple of other yeah. tall ships. Um, oddly enough, my military time, I was not in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you, you were, you were in the Air Force, right? I was in the Air Force, yes. Air Force. So, um, big top yeah, we, gun fan. I was going to say, that's very top gun of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, danger zone. <laughs> nah. So St. Augustine, uh, Augustine has a real pirate history. If it wasn't for pirates, there would St. Augustine might not actually even be here. I was going to ask you about that because, like, uh, of all my research on pirates, like, uh, you know, like St. Augustine never came up. So, like, I don't know anything about the pirate uh, history of St. Augustine, and I, I really would like to know that. So let's let, – I'll do it in a nutshell, and then you can ask questions if you want. So okay. – so many questions. 1513, Juan Ponce de Leon claims all this land and names it La, La Florida for the King of Spain. But the Spanish aren't going to really do anything with it. 1563, a French pirate named Jean Ribot builds a fort called Fort Caroline on Spanish soil. Fort Caroline is now where Jacksonville, Florida is. The king doesn't want the French pirates on his land because they're Protestant and the Spanish are Catholic. They don't want yeah. Protestants. They can't get along. Yeah. For one reason for wars in the world is religion. So he sends Pedro Menendez here and in 1565 he begins to build the city of St. Augustine and then proceeds in a short 30-day period, I believe about a 30-day period, he proceeds to remove all the French from this land by killing every one of them. Oh, damn. So now the Spanish have St. Augustine here in 1565. In 1586, Sir Francis Drake comes here. Now, before, yeah, according, according to is. the history books, Sir Francis Drake in England is a hero and an explorer. But this is Spanish history here. 
he was a privateer and a pirate. Yeah. And he came here and burnt the city to the ground. That's 1586. You have 1668, Robert Serrells, a Welsh pirate that comes here. He sets fire to the city, destroys the fort, steals what he can, and scares the people so badly that they decide it's time to have a real fort. The real fort is the Castillo de San Marcos. That's the 10th fort. Started in 1672. From 1565 to 1672, there were nine forts here, nine yeah. wooden forts, all destroyed. 1565 to 1672 is 107 years. So in yeah. 107 years, they lost nine forts. Jeez. So they build the Castillo. While the Castillo is being built, a pirate named Andrew Ranson attacks the city, but he gets caught and they try to execute him in the town square. That's a completely separate story because he survives the execution and stays here. And there are family relatives here in St. Augustine that are related to him. And then in 1686 and 1688, a, a French pirate named uh, Nicolas de Grimond, he attacks the city of St. Augustine. I always tell everybody my story is that I came here with Nicolas de Grimond as a Scottish pirate on board his French ship. But after the second failure, I jumped ship and came to shore and I've been living in St. Augustine since 1688. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So in a nutshell, you've got 1563 pirate story, 1586 pirate story, 1568 pirate story, 15, or 1672 pirate story, 16, uh, 1686 and 1688. That's seven pirate stories in 120 years. In oh St. man, Augustine. I'm moving. <laughs> and, there are, and there are others, there are smaller attacks, there are smaller things. Um, I'm researching a story now that in the, probably the 1700s that the governor of St. Augustine and I don't, I don't have enough information yet to find everything, but the governor of St. Augustine commissioned a ship and a crew and paid them to be pirates to attack up and down the coastline and bring food back to St. Augustine because food here was a food here was an was an issue. Yeah. Um, the the Spanish weren't weren't flush with lots of food, so I'm still researching that story. I don't know how true it is yet, but when I find out. Maybe we can talk about it. Oh, yeah. That oh, yeah. sounds awesome. Now, do you have any thoughts or opinions? Uh, have you heard of the um, of our pirate? We have a pirate very local to us. Man, I was a, just about to uh, say some shit Lafitte? about that. Lafitte? John Lafitte. John I was Lafitte. Ask you what you knew he's about John he's buried. He's buried in Texas. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, in uh, his big thing was mostly in Louisiana. But he t he's talked about here because he, he spent some time in Galveston. We well, died in Galveston. Yeah. Right. Well, like, uh, well, he was attacked. I well, yeah, but like most of his history is like uh, what he did in Louisiana. That's oh, my point. okay. So he had he had a big following. He had a large crew. He probably had a dozen ships. Yeah. If it wasn't for him, um, although it depended on the historian you talk to, the Battle of New Orleans was 1814. But yeah, by the yeah. time that battle had happened, the War of 1812 had just closed. If they had gotten the news fast enough, there would have been no Battle of 1814. Yeah. But John Lafitte and his pirates, they pretty much tore the British a new one. Oh, literally. I love this story. They really, they really tore the British a new one. The British lost, and I could be wrong with my numbers. I'd have to go back and look at the book. But the British lost about 75 to 80 percent of their forces. Yeah. John, Lafitte, John Lafitte lost about nine percent of his forces. Jeez. Yeah, like he literally saved New Orleans during the War of 1812. Yeah. And he was he was a hero for it. And then uh that's when uh I don't know, it's so common. Like I only looked him up because like, you know, I, I really enjoyed the the golden age of piracy and the Caribbeans and all that. Uh but well after that, John Lafitte's, well, years later, and it's like, well, I love piracy. It's a hundred it's a hundred years after the golden age of piracy, but he still operates his pirate crews under the same auspices of the pirate code of the golden age of piracy. See, didn't even know that, dude. Like that oh, I, oh man, that's, that's so cool. Deep. 
pretty yeah. deep. And and for for you, Adam. The, well, you can tour. Like, just, you can like tour his uh, his uh, house, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> I have a picture. I just went over to Louisiana for a pirate festival in Louisiana the first two weeks of April. Oh yeah. Um, a friend of mine has a Renaissance festival there. We're military buddies from back in the day. Yeah. And he went home. We got out of the military at the same time back in 1991. He went home and built a Renaissance festival. He he owns the Louisiana Renaissance Festival. Oh, nice. It's That's one very of the, cool. It's, it's one of the 10 top fest, Ren festivals in the country. Yeah, but I live in Texas. The, t- the, one in, the one in Texas, the one in Maryland, the one in Arizona, those are in the yeah. top 10 also. Yeah. So during COVID, I had Zoom meetings with him and his partners, and they wanted to build a pirate festival. Well, they did their first one in April. And they invited me to come over and, and do magic. And I have a traveling museum that I take around with me. And yeah. it was, it, he did very well for a two weekend event. He did really well. But in the middle of the week or in between the two weekends, there's no festival. So the buddy that I had that went with me and we camped all week in period correct tents for the whole 11 days. We decided to go to New Orleans. <laughs> I wasn't impressed, but I did get my picture taken at John Lafitte's blacksmith shop, which is now a, now a bar. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. So I did get my picture taken there. <laughs> Pretty cool. So and for uh, in case you didn't know, Adam, the pirate code he's talking about, like the first time there's a pirate code on a ship, that was Henry Morgan, right? And like he's yes. very insistent on having a pirate code. That's me. And it spread from that's there. me. Would you calm down with your last name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. And, and, and like I'm not mistaken about that, right? Henry Morgan was the first to have a code, and it almost spread from there, right? I mean, Bartholomew Roberts was very, his code was ridiculous. But the, code, know, the code of Bartholomew was Roberts was probably the one copied the most by others. But Bartholomew Roberts and Henry Morgan, um, Captain Kidd. Uh, yeah, even, they all even, had codes, right? They all had a code. Here, Here's what I, here's two points of the code that I like to tell everybody. The very first article in every one of the codes says in this group of words all men meaning all men of the crew all men have an equal voice in affairs of the moment yeah if you actually think about that a minute and listen to the affairs of the moment it means that every man had a voice in the everyday workings of what was going on on that ship they uh-huh. had a voice. They had a vote. The ships were miniature corporations ran by the crew itself. And they all had a voice of their own destiny. The one thing that's fun to tell people about, because we get a lot of church schools and church vis- uh, groups coming to the Pirate Museum. Yeah. Bartholomew's Code, the last article in Bartholomew's Code is all ships musicians will have the Sabbath day as rest. Oh man, yeah. I love to tell people that because it proves that pirates were Christians, <laughs> which is crazy. Because you know, Bartholomew Roberts also slaughtered so many people. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, Christians usually do. Yeah, well, and you know, was, uh, <laughs> I was just like well, looking he, up he, on his uh, he was a pretty brutal man. Yeah, like, oh uh, man, I'm trying to, uh, I kind of feel like he was the one who served someone someone's lips. That might have been someone else. Uh, Sir, how, say that again. He cut off a man's lips and cooked them and served them to him. Is You're thinking of... That might have been... Weird it, I don't think it's Bartholomew Roberts. You're thinking of... Damn it. I can't think of his name right now. I can see the display we have in the museum. Yeah, I'd say like Rob- this event here- is in my head, but I can't think of the name with it. Here's how Bartholomew Roberts came to be a captain. Short version story. He's, yeah, a, he, a good- he's very intelligent. He's yeah. a mathematician. He knows how to navigate. And he has a reputation as a great navigator. And he's a navigator on a merchant or supply ship. And a crew, and I don't remember the name of the captain of the pirate crew that takes this ship, but when they find out they have Bartholomew Roberts, the navigator, they want him to be a member of their crew, and he doesn't want to be a pirate. So they they make him a prisoner and force him to navigate. Yeah, and uh, apparently this guy, 
Like I, I always forget the name of the captain too, and apparently, it is a famous uh, captain. And it's like, well, how famous is he? If I can't remember his damn name, I but, well, you know. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to remember all of them. So they're yeah, so I they're know there's taking, so many. So they attack a city, and I want to say it's San Martinique, and I could be wrong there too. Um, and I'll just say that rum makes me forgetful. But um, oh yeah, so they attack a city, and during the attack on the city. The captain of the crew is killed and they retreat. The crew comes to a unanimous vote and votes Bartholomew Roberts as the captain of the crew because they all have respect for him because he's he knows the sea and he navigates. Yeah, what are they, what are they, they have a term for him. It's a uh, bullet, it's not bulletproof, or it's like, ah. Uh, I've been drinking so much I can't remember. Oh my god. So he, it's so then as the captain of the crew, he goes back to the city that just killed their captain and he takes the leadership of that city and brings them out and hangs them all on the yard arm of his ship. Oh yes, as his yeah. First as his first act as a captain in front of his crew. Yeah, I love that. that point on, first act this captain is to avenge the old captain. Absolutely. So you know how many you know how many ships Bartholomew he was Bartholomew Roberts was probably the most successful pirate out of all of them. Absolutely, you know he uh, plundered like what, what was it like four hundred ships or something like 461 that? Four hundred and sixty-one or four sixty-seven, yeah. something like that. Four hundred and sixty something. That was an Bar active Blackbeard. Crew. Blackbeard only talked up um, plundered three, maybe four ships, and then Charleston. Yeah. And Bartholomew Roberts was was a pirate captain for about thirty eight months. The average was was about thirty months. Oh yeah, like it, 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 yeah. and like you said, like a short life and a merry one. You know, like all and, of these pirates, their careers were crazy short. And it's like, oh, you know, you hear about these names. That, like he was a pirate all his life. No, nope, he was a pirate for two years. Yeah. Here, <laughs> here's here's another thing to, to talk about Bartholomew Roberts' crew, so you understand. And it's one of the reasons they're my favorite crew. I'll be, I'll be back. So they're attacked by a British ship. Yeah. Bartholomew Roberts is standing on the deck of the ship, and at least seven sharpshooters from the British ship all aim at him and shoot him, and he and he drops dead. Oh, you're talking He's, about like sharpshooters with with uh with muskets, yes. Oh man, see, I, I heard he he uh he got taken out by a cannon. No, that's no. Thomas too. Yeah, I've heard like literally like every version. I've heard he's been uh taken out by muskets, and I, I just thought that that was incorrect. And I also heard he was taken out by, by like a chain shot, and I was heard he's taken out by just normal cannon. But he was like taken out, was he was crew. taken out by musket shot, and before the British could board their ship, the crew had already wrapped chains around him and given him his pirate burial so that the British couldn't defile his body. Yeah, and like and then, in, in a. What was it? The crew, me, me, I'm the, sorry, I don't mean crew, What'd you say? That's all right. Then the crew lays down their arms and allows the entire crew. They give up together as a crew. The British take them, and they all hang together as a crew. Yeah, and the biggest uh, a pirate trial that ever happened. It was like, oh man, I can't remember. It was like what, like a hundred pirates were tried. About hundred and twelve. Yeah. And so here's the point more than anything else about it. If you think about it, and this is what I like to tell people, Bartholomew Roberts as a leader and what his crew did when he was killed and they just gave up, that's the epitome of what loyalty really is. Absolutely, because he didn't want his body to be displayed or, or used as an example. You know, in a, in a you see, what I was going to say is, uh, I couldn't remember this, and I was trying to tell Adam about it, but uh, you have to, uh, you have to remember to tell someone about it. Uh, what was the name of the cage, the human-shaped cage they put? A uh, giblet or a giblet? A, a, a gibbet. 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 Yeah, there's no L. He didn't want That's that. It. There's no L. Yeah, he didn't want that. Yeah. Do you know why he didn't want that? Well, I, oh, I assumed it was like, uh, like what I said. He didn't want to be made as an anti-piracy example or put on display you know well there's another reason the other reason is this are you still there oh yeah absolutely so where's my oh there it is right there okay i was like can you still hear i me? thought i lost this here's another reason and i'm i'm gonna preface this by saying 
I don't know that this is 100% true, but yeah. I have read a few things that tell me it's a thought process. Yeah. Back in this time frame, men and women believe that if their bodies after death were not properly taken care of and buried proper. Oh, yeah, I know where you're going. They were, they were, they were scared that they would roam the, roam the earth as a disembodied spirit. Tom, uh, uh, Bartholomew Roberts was very, very religious. Yeah, he actually, yeah, man. Like, he that actually goes back had to Bible reading earlier. on board his ship with his crew. If he was very religious, as we know him to have been, it might be one of the reasons he didn't want his body put in a gibbet. He wanted his body properly buried at sea which was which was okay yeah yeah so, which is like you know it, it's we they believe that being buried at sea though as like you know and these days you look at it and it's not a burial at all it was a straight christian funeral to them you know like there's, absolutely there's, it was. there's the ceremony so and if everything they, if they, the if they were put in a buried. And, right so if they were put in a gibbet as captain kidd was because the story is that Captain yeah, Kidd, when he was executed on 17, in 1701, they left his body in a gibbet over the Thames River for several years. Oh, yeah. And, and so, I can only imagine that. You know, like, yeah. for the first days, you know, he's the general decompensation. You know, it, it's not like they put a skeleton out there. They put his body out there, and the, the public got to watch it turn into a skeleton. Oh, good. Now... Some of the stories are that they dip the body in tar, so there is a tar cake over the entire body. Oh, wow. For a while, it was well, probably would hold the stench down, but the, the ravens and the buzzards would get on board and, and start pecking to get the eyeballs or whatever else. And open it up, basically. Over, uh, ugly smell and everything. So, um, so in a way, and I only, I only tell this part of the story about the give it and the religious possibility. I never say it's it's for sure because I deal in, in history. I say this is something that I've read um, and you can make your own conclusions, but knowing the way of the, of the religious belief of people, I believe that the give it might've been something that the government's used as a deterrent to try to convince pirates to not be to pirates. I mean, oh, I why, why, do, why do we have in, in our day and age right now, why do we have a death penalty? Because we hope it's a deterrent to keep people from doing stupid things. It doesn't work in most cases, but <clears throat> the gibbet could have been a deterrent to pirates to convince them that maybe being a pirate's not a good idea because when we hang you, we're just going to display your body for a while. <sighs> now, are you talking about uh, for the religion? Or, or it can be a deterrent for anyone, but the religious part is like. Almost like, you know, and, and like, you know, just because you're religious and you believe in God and all that, you worship God, doesn't mean you're without, like, people can, like, do the most atrocious sins and they're still, uh, Bartholomew Roberts, he's a pirate, he killed people. <laughs> but, but he was a Christian, he believed in God and he worshiped God. And he was and a he, man and he had sin, Bible and he had Bible reading on, on the deck <clears throat> of a ship on a daily basis. Absolutely. We know that yeah. to be true also. So, like, these Christian And pirates. in the museum, before you go to that point, I'll tell you one other thing. In our museum, we actually have a Bible in the museum, and on the cover of the Bible, it says, this is the Kidd family Bible. It is the family Bible of Captain William Kidd. Oh, man, that's Ooh. cool. We are going to the museum. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but no, like, so, uh, the Christian pirate, and they did exist, would be so deterred from that, because that's like saying, we are barring you from heaven, or we are making you... Uh, cling to this existence, like you're talking about, because you, when we put your body on display, you were not properly laid to rest, so your soul will linger. And it's like we're making your soul linger. So let's let me throw this to you for a thought. The major nationalities of all pirates during uh, most pirates can't say all most pirates during the golden age of piracy was six nationalities. Yeah. England, Spain, France, Welsh, Irish, Scottish. There were Portuguese pirates, Dutch pirates, mm. Italian pirates. Yeah, German I was gonna say pirates. what about Portuguese? You know? They, Portuguese they were, the but they weren't in as they yeah. weren't as in as large a number. Yeah, Which like no, there's not a huge a lot of Portuguese pirate stories, you know. No, and here's my justification for that. The conquest of the New World was really by three major countries. 
yeah. Spain, France, and England. And then you throw the Welsh, the Irish, and the Scottish in because they were part of the Great Britain. And there you have it. I so can. the pirate history is really interesting because, and I tell people this, and I firmly believe it, if it were not pirates, the idea of democracy in this country may not ever have happened. What a great interview. Now it's time for the beer of the day. The and today's day of the beer. beer of the day was Tangerine Session L Swell Rider by D9 Brewing Company. This is a 5% in alcohol by view. <laughs> My my beer is gonna be higher than this. Right, uh, let's go ahead and review the Tangerine D9 Sweet Rider. And like, although like I gotta say like, I, I wouldn't want the connection to shut off at any time. Yeah. But at least it happened right there, at right the at ending, the end. At the end. Like it just made us look like we cut out rudely, yeah. but we, we we had a good time with this these. Tangerine Session L. I'm gonna give a straight up eight. Yeah. At first it sucked. Yeah. At first it wasn't that good, but then it was like, this is a really good, a session beer is a beer you would drink on the couch. Yeah, on, session couch. L. Yeah. Session. So yeah, it's like, having a session so I it. mean, this was this ended up being a surprisingly really good beer. I'm going to give it an eight. Yeah, I agree with an eight because it was very uh, citrusy. And I, yeah. I, I used to hate them because I, I, lo I used to hate anything that wasn't just straight up beer flavor to beer, you know? Yeah. And but then like I think citrusy beers are so refreshing, so I'm already biased. But exactly. yeah, I really enjoyed the tangerine as opposed to any other citrusy fruit. Exactly. A tangerine ale was tangerine very good. ale, but that's just your opinion. That's fine. Because all we have here are opinions and pirate beer. facts in beer. Beer. We are a million